Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I've got five Argentinian Chardonnays here, uh, ranging from 2014, I think it's up to 2011. Um, somewhere, yeah, 2011. Anyway, uh, let's just dig into them and see where we get to. First one I have is from Marks and Spencer's Vinalta. Uh, high vines, Chardonnay 2014, um, made from from Mendoza, which like 75% of uh, uh, of Argentina's wine comes from the Mendoza province. Um, I don't know whereabouts in Mendoza does it say? Um, altitude of 1,200 meters. Higher you go, the cooler it is. That's all the the, the the whole point about the altitude stuff. Anyway, give it a whirl. Like a creamy toffee character here, um, slightly confected, uh, a little bit of um, pineapple, maybe a bit some peach in there. It smells like it's going to be uh, have a like what I call an oiliness about it. You think about um, the juice that you get in tins of fruit. There's, there's uh, some of some of that character, but it also feels like it's not going to be too rich and cloying. So maybe those slightly oily flavours, uh, but crisp finish. Let's have a see. Funny, slightly disjointed wine. I mean, it's. Um, so it's into its second year now, um, but what I notice is there's a really ripe bit, so there's like fig, pineapple characters, and then there's this pithier edge, like really slightly too pithy grapefruit pith. And the two bits are sitting together slightly disjointedly. Um, it tastes okay, uh, but uh, it feels like in order to maintain that little bit of freshness, yes, they've got the altitude, uh, but some fruit has maybe been picked a little bit too late, and to compensate, they've picked something too early to um, uh, to try and freshen it up. It's okay, but um, not great. Uh, wine number two, um, Andaluna 1300. Uh, Andaluna 1300. It sounds like a an inferior British Leyland car. Sorry about that. No, it doesn't sound like an inferior British Leyland car. Uh, the idea is 1300 meters, vines touching the sky. Uh, so we are in uh, Mendoza again, and they've actually put on, th this is uh, Val de Uco, um, seller in Tupungato, blah, blah, Michel Roland is involved here. Uh, let's give it a whirl. It's a year old, uh, but um, it feels like a more um, confident, uh, crisper wine. It's slightly paler in colour. And it here, I, I don't know whether just that extra 100 metres altitude or whether it's the, the people who've made it. What I noticed is um, there is this, um, yeah, there's none of that slightly oily, overripe character here. Here it's all not uniformly ripe, but there's the, there's a, it feels like there's going to be a crispness about it. So lemons, a little bit of melon, but none of those going to tropical flavours. And uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of stony character too. It smells inviting. Interesting that the, 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 the extra year has um, has rounded it out, so it's slightly softer, um, less aggressive than the, the previous one. But there's still this Christmas, and uh, there is a bite about it. There's this stony bite, and there's also a little bit of um, carbon dioxide. It feels like they've bottled it with some residual uh, carbon dioxide just to freshen it all up. Um, and um, I like it. Yes, there, there, there are these um, uh, slightly riper flavours, maybe verging on the very ripe peach in there, as well as this uh, citrus freshness. So a nice tension between the two. I don't know whether it says anything about uh, oak. Um, it, no, unoaked. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't see any anything there muddying it. Um, and uh, it's looking pretty nice. Mm, like that. I can imagine myself drinking rather a lot of that. Uh, next one, uh, P15 2013 Chardonnay from Patagonia. P15, is that like a third of a third of the way to being sacked? Um, that's an English joke, P45, look it up, but it's not all that funny. Um, anyway, um, Patagonia, I don't know whereabouts in Patagonia. Uh, the main bits of um, Patagonia are... Uh, well, there's uh, what's it called Rio Negro and uh, New Ken. I don't know which bit this comes from. Uh, it refers to Picarda 15, one of the many old dusty and stony roads uh, running across our vineyards in San Patricio del Chania in the arid Pat Patagonian landscape. Uh, let's just give it a whirl. Well, we're further south here, so you think it's going to be cooler and crisper, but it actually feels like it's. Uh, uh, it's going to be a fleshier wine than the previous one. Maybe it's the altitude of the um, uh, of the uh, Andaluna that uh, that is making giving it that Christmas. But here it's on that really ripe peach, just verging into the fresh 
and just a little bit of um, tinned pineapple flavour. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, it, again, I don't notice uh, too much oak influence here. I think it's just that the idea is letting the fruit shine out, and it's quite nice fruit that's shining out. It reminds me a, a little bit of um, Australian uh, Chardonnay Semillon rather than Semillon Chardonnay. There is this richness of Chardonnay fruit and something pithy there, not pithy in the way that I was getting it on the um, uh, the, the, the Vinalta. Here, it's, um, it is the grapefruit. They, they've got the zest, but not the white bit underneath. Um, and it's juicy and it's plump, not too plump. Um, it's... It's nice, but not as the the one before had these little really bright flavours. Here, it's slightly, slightly more relaxed, and some people will prefer it for, for that reason. I prefer the um, the previous one because of that Christmas and perkiness. I I would have a glass of that and uh, maybe proffer my empty for another refill, but. Um, as I say, I prefer the previous one. Um, wine at number four, uh, still in 2013. This is Tapiz uh, 2013 from Mendoza. Uh, and we're at 1,400 metres here. So uh, uh, let's see whether 100 metres makes a difference between this and the Andaluna. And it's very much back to that... Um, uh, Tupungato uh, profile that was in, in, in the Andaluna this uh, Christmas and uh, it, it, it's a little bit more apple uh, um, apple and citrus and maybe a little bit of the melon uh, uh, and uh, it feels like it's going to have the similar similar profile to the Andaluna maybe slightly higher cheekbones maybe that extra hundred meters has just uh, made the, uh, the acidity um, stand out there just that little bit more. Some people will not like it because of that. Some people don't like acidity. I, I, I like freshness in my wine, so uh, I'm looking forward to this. I haven't put it in my mouth yet. I'm still, I'm still sniffing it. Um, I, I think it, this one has been in oak because there's, there's this, like a creamy, toasty character that, that, that's jumping out, and it almost feels like the wine is just stretching and opening up. So it's... Um, Yes, it's got. It's probably got uh, quite a lot of acidity, but it feels like it's also these extra layers of richness that just keep swirling out. Very interesting because you've got. It's, it, you put it in your mouth and you think it's going to be too rich. It's got this quite a broad, fleshy, creamy flavour rather than it's. It, it's these uh, characters from the oak aging. So a little bit of um, slight buttery edge, uh, a little bit of oatmeal and uh, this, this richness rather than richness and ripeness of fruit and then this acidity kicks in keeps your mouth fresh you can almost feel it coming up the sides of your tongue and um, I, the, there is this little bit of peach little bit of uh, passion fruit coming through on the finish guava too um, it, it's weird when I look at wines like this sometimes they, they come straight I mean, you saw me undo the screw cap uh, sometimes wines like this just, they just jump out uh, and say hello here I am and then um, an hour or so later they've calmed down and more of the um, more of the the spine of uh, uh, more of the structure comes through so I'll, I'll keep an eye on this because um, I like it now but it's almost it's almost just like it's, it's like, oh, I've been released from my bottle here I am um, and um, I, th I think that I, I like it now and I think it's going to get better in the next hour or so I'll report back final one um, so we've had a, a 2014, a two, no, three 2013s, and this one's uh, 2011, Doña Paula. Uh, and Doña Paula is the estate uh, established by um, Chile's Santa Rita. Uh, but it's been, it, it's run pretty much as a, a, a separate entity. And uh, uh, it, they, I mean, they, 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 they have, was it Cabernet Franc? I've been really impressed by some of their Cabernet Franc in the past, but um, Sauvignon too, they, they do some excellent Sauvignon. And I am looking forward to this because I, um, last time I tried one of their Chardonnays, it was rather good. Let's see whether this one is a rather good. Mmm, this smells good. Um, just a word about elevation first. Uh, they it's, they're slight cop out. They say they're at 3,300 feet, um, which I think translates into meters about 1,050 something like that. Uh, but they say vineyards all above that, so it could be that they go up to can't remember what the top height is in, in um, uh, Mendoza at the moment. Probably 1,700 meters, maybe even a little bit higher by now, or it could be 1,050 up to 1,060. I don't know. Uh, but here. I get those, um, I was talking about broad, 
uh, quite fleshy flavours uh, jumping out on the previous one. Here, it's like those similar flavours have been there and they've just calmed down a little bit. So you are getting a little bit of this nutty oatmeal character. Uh, you are getting these... Um, no, just verging on the tropical, uh, a little bit of passion fruit and pineapple uh, and the peach. But you're, it, what's coming through more is uh, what I call life beyond fruit. So that there is, yes, there's some of it is, um, is to do with wine making. There's a little bit of toastiness. There's a little bit of uh, creamy nuttiness from, uh, from Lee's ageing. But I think there's also um, something that is definitely soil related that's, uh, that you can smell. But a bit of taste, yeah, not I? Ooh, that's rather nice. Um, it's got those fleshy flavours, uh, but it's got this this bite of acidity and this mineral edge as well, just to uh, uh, something, yeah, uh, mineral, call it what you want. Uh, there's something there that is definitely not just to do with um, the, the grape variety or the winemaking. There's something that, uh, uh, that the vines seem to have sucked out of the soil. And um, how it comes across, uh, there's this... Uh, it, 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 there's a textural thing, so you feel this creamy texture, but then there's also uh, this broad fruit, yeah, so there's quite virgin, ever so slight bit of peach, pineapple, a uh, bit of passion fruit in there, but there's also citrus freshness, and um, it, it sort of dances around your tongue and uh, makes you think, I want another sip of that. It's not, I mean, so there'll be some people who say, oh, is it like Burgundy? It's not like Burgundy, it's like, it's, it's Argentinian Chardonnay. It's just because it's made from the same thing. It doesn't taste like, uh, I, I would not have put this in Burgundy. I think if you'd asked me what, what the, where this was from, I would have been in some of the coolest spots of uh, South Australia, I think. I think I'd have been putting in Adelaide Hills rather than uh, Yarra and, um, and Mornington. But um, pretty classy stuff, that. And uh, mm, uh, I'll, 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 I'll be keeping an eye on this. I'll be keeping an eye on the tapis to see uh, whether that relaxes and becomes more like this. But uh, this is the star act today. And, um, but the, the Andaluna was nice, too. So uh, nice set of five wines. And uh, certainly gives me, um, makes me spoilt for choice for what to drink tonight. See you soon.